Shawn is the Director of Strategy and Policy for the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. He's been touring with Richard Dawkins on a 10-talk tour over the past two weeks, and he's toured with Richard previously uh, to promote other books. He comes to his mission of trying to promote science education from deep experience as a legislator. Um, he graduated from the University of Notre Dame and the University of California, College of Law at Hastings. He then worked in private law practice before being elected to the Maine legislature, where he served five terms. He was elected majority whip, and in the process of his work there, he received all kinds of awards, for instance, from the American Heart Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Psychological Association, and the National Association of Social Workers. In 2009, he became executive director of the Secular Coalition for America, advocating for separation of church and state. This year, he published a book, Attack of the Theocrats, How the Religious Right Harms Us All and What We Can Do About It. I'm so glad he's here with us today. Sean Faircloth, please join us. I'm, I'm going to ask you to do four things, but first, let us solemnly bow our heads in thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, O great Homo Erectus. Blessed be thy name. Untold millions did not, but every generation of your ancestors reproduced. And we're lucky to happen upon this unique moment in history. During the entire 200,000 years of modern Homo sapiens, only in this last 400, this last little sliver, have we benefited from the formal concept known as the Enlightenment. Sir Francis Bacon, known for his fantastic threads, and also known for his book, The New Method, meaning the scientific method. In the year 2020, we must toast the 400th anniversary of Bacon's book. In fact, we can toast him tonight over at the Cottage Inn. I'll see you there. But uh, Bacon's book sparked the Enlightenment as a worldview, and as a way of life. And when I say way of life, I mean life. Modern medicine springs from the Enlightenment. Modern technology, its time and life-saving techniques spring from the Enlightenment. Modern public health springs from the Enlightenment. James Madison, father of the Constitution said, and I quote, during almost 15 centuries, the legal establishment of Christianity has been on trial. What have been its fruits? More or less in all places, pride and indolence in the clergy, ignorance and servility in the laity, in both superstition, bigotry, and persecution. Close quote. And what, by contrast, have been the fruits of the Enlightenment? the average human lifespan more than doubled. 400 years is 1 500th of the 200,000 years of our modern species. And yet, after thousands of years with little progress, human lifespan doubles, and there's real scientific prospect of significant life extension in the near future. There's still terrible ills in this world, but billions today live better lives than the kings of Bacon's time. And you know what? I flew here in a giant metal tube, communicating to people via email worldwide. What a fascinating sliver of time. The Enlightenment's beautiful burst of illumination. Yet the Enlightenment is under threat. The leading political party in Egypt tweets, and I quote, Rise up to support Muhammad in front of the American embassy. Sadly, many people, mostly Muslim, died. The Enlightenment's also under threat in the United States of America. Presidents Eisenhower and Kennedy, Republican and Democrat, strongly supported science, aspiring to a nation guided by reason. America's now a nation where religious bias creeps into American law. Regardless of whether President Obama wins, most of the theocrats that I name in my book will still have their hands on the levers of power in Congress and in the legislatures. The Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science works to overcome the intolerance and the suffering that springs from fundamentalism. You know 
about the religious bias uh, against gay people in American law and reproductive rights, but I document in my book eight more areas of law on the books today, American laws based on religious bias, laws harming real people. I'm not talking about a manger in a town square. I document 10 areas of American law, current law, where everyday citizens suffer injustice. And in extreme cases, children placed in situations of ill health or death with the imprimatur of American law that is religiously biased. Now there are those who say, I'm all for critical thinking, except when it applies to what my church imposes on others. There are those who say, I'm all for the enlightenment, except when it applies to what my mosque imposes on others. Enlightenment, only when convenient, is not enlightenment at all. There are those of us who say, that reason must be applied equally everywhere in the world. There are those of us who say that science must benefit all of our fellow citizens everywhere in the world. There are those of us who say that compassion must be extended to everyone, children included, everywhere in the world. RichardDawkins.net gets a million hits a month. It's a community. It's a crossroads, and it is a catalyst. But this enlightenment catalyst only succeeds if you become an activist. And you've heard it said, well, you know, organizing secular people is like herding cats. Well, there we go again. As a 10-year politician, let me tell you, the religious right didn't miraculously get veto power over one of two major political parties in the United States. They took power using what evolution gave them, fingers, not cat paws, to make phone calls. It was work. It was not divine intervention. And for us, we should make the best of opportunities like these when Richard Dawkins comes to town. But we must appreciate Richard Dawkins as a catalyst not as a crutch. Most of the time, it's going to be some good, strong, less known secular or scientific speaker. And that's good for organizing. Why? We must have organizers who use that phone, securing 10 people to help, who in turn lock in 10 more to help. I've been lobbied as a politician, and I've lobbied at both the state and the federal level. Lobbying elected officials for secularism is very important. But I gotta tell you, from experience, you know what a lobbyist is? Nobody. By themselves, nobody at all. Here's why. If a lobbyist in a state capital can't email thousands or plunk thousands of dollars on the table, that lobbyist doesn't exist. It's the organizer. It's the organization. It's the phone call and it's the phone tree. Dr. Cornwell, the executive director of our foundation and I will do a grassroots training to help organize in your community. But you must lead. If you get just 100 people in a room for a non-Dawkins level speaker, that's momentum. Make it fun. Maybe it's at a pub's function room. People socialize. Find someone to go on a date with. I mean, after all, think about it. There's the stranger in the bar approach. <laughs> or you can find someone who thinks like you. And by the way, all secular people look like this. <laughs> So build fun, build community. Then people compete for organizational offices, they take on projects at a million hits a month. RichardDawkins.net can help you, I'll help you, to organize a statewide convention, maybe with a couple of national speakers, but much more important, state secular advocates, state organizers, state speakers, becoming a real force in civic life. Evolution gave us fingers, not paws, and we, those fingers can work phones beautifully. If the religious right can organize for intolerance and injustice, we can organize for science and reason and compassion. And if you think you can't organize a robust statewide secular group, ask Sarah Blaine and Matt Shonley in Arizona, ask the people in the state of Alabama, and really, does a place like Michigan want to be behind Arizona and Alabama? <laughs> Come on now. See, and also, 
with ex-Muslims and ex-Mormons and African-American atheists and Latino humanists. They all face unique challenges. Leaders from these communities can use richarddawkins.net as an organizing tool. Also, our foundation needs your help to crowdsource our upcoming documentary. I give a speech on YouTube entitled The Religio-Industrial Complex, in which I go into detail. But suffice it to say that mega-ministers are growing ever wealthier, taking money from their flock, sure they are, but they're also taking money from you and you and you. How are they doing it? Among many other tax advantages, there's a massive loophole called the Parsonage Exemption that subsidizes many mega-minister McMansions nationwide. This documentary will make religio-industrial complex and the lifestyles of the rich and religious household terms. This movie will introduce Americans to 10 victims of 10 areas of religious bias in law as described in my book. You can help this movie. Every community has one or more mega minister who lives in an extravagant home. Yes, it's simple. Email me photos of these mansions <laughs> with the minister's name. We taxpayers should not be forced to subsidize mega ministers with this parsonage exemption. Now here's another key hurdle that we have to leap. You've heard this one said as well. Contribute money to a secular organization? That sounds like church tithing. To which I reply, exactly. I mean, do you just want to pat your own back about how very smart you are compared to those religious fanatics? That would be the religious fanatics who are drinking your milkshake in the political marketplace. They invested in their worldview. Secular organizations holding statewide conventions need money to have an impact. An investment in the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science is an investment in broad-based organizing and in issue framing. You know, tithing means 10%. If secular people contributed just half of that, we'd dramatically improve the political landscape. We must invest our time, our money, our effort, because people need us. Girls oppressed by legally sanctioned religious sexism in American fundamentalist schools, those girls need us. People facing the end of life, their personal liberty constrained by religious bias in law, those people need us. People facing diseases, diseases that might be alleviated by stem cell research, those people need us. You want acceptance? As a humanist, an atheist, an agnostic, a free thinker, get your checkbook or cede the field to the religious right. You say people who think like you should win public office, organize a statewide convention with richarddawkins.net. Go to richarddawkins.net and sign up for a fundraiser, get involved, or invite us back. Organize your own event or fundraiser, but do something. Because our cause, the cause of the Enlightenment, is distinct in history. Do we want equal rights for a humanist in Pakistan? You bet we do. Do we want equal rights for an atheist in Saudi Arabia? You bet we do. But for us, it has never been just about us. Because will we organize for the human rights for a so-called fundamentalist child left to die in a so-called faith healing home? You bet we will. Will we organize for the human rights for a Muslim woman in Egypt? You bet we will. Will we organize for equal rights for a girl in a fundamentalist school? You bet we will. Our humanist adherence to reason, our compassion for those who suffer, does not divide humans into categories, but unites us for a better future. As humanists, we seek progress for all humans, not merely for our own self-interest. That's what makes our cause unique. Antiquated religious bias must go. Sexism, paternalism, authoritarianism, gay bashing, child abuse, all regularly justified in the name of religion, all corrosive to the human spirit. They all must go. We can thank our executive director, Dr. Elizabeth Cornwell, for the out campaign that is symbolized here. But let this be a symbol, not just of identity, but of action, an emblem of your personal effort and investment, serving the cause of the foundation, 
the cause of the Enlightenment. After 200,000 years of our species, we, in this day, in this unique time, we are given a unique opportunity at a pivotal moment in history, a moment when the forces of fundamentalism are strong, a moment in which we can prove that the forces of the Enlightenment are stronger. Our energy, our compassion, our ideals can lead us to that bright moment when the forces of fundamentalism are vanquished and enlightenment reigns throughout the globe. Now is your time to organize. Now is your time to lead. I will work with you. For those who want to organize, I mean it. I will be there at the Cottage Inn tonight because we can change America. If we work together, I'll see you at 8.30. Right there, let's do it together. Thank you.